Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Town Council meeting of Monday, April 6, 2015. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and could we have the roll call by the town clerk? Chairman Ray? Here. Councilor Grennan? Here. Councilor Jordan? Councilor McCausland? Here. Councilor Sullivan? Here. Councilor Wagner? Present. And Councilor Walsh? Here. Thank you. Uh, moving on to town council reports and correspondence. Uh, do we have anything? Yes. Hi. Chairman Ray, I'd like to uh, 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 mention, it's been out and announced that on Thursday um, the, of this week, the Solid Waste and Recycling Long Range Planning Committee is holding a public input session. And it's been advertised, it's been on the <coughs> website, but we're hoping that members of the public will come and participate. We're going to have tables all set up for, uh, all the tables in this room are going to be set up to facilitate discussion. There'll be a facilitator and a note at every table people to talk about uh, things that they would like to see at the transfer station, whether they are interested in things like curbside parking, uh, curbside pickup or not, or how they feel about the swap shop. So we're hoping that we have a, a good turnout and a lot of participation. I think it'll be a very interesting evening, so I'm hoping that people will come. And I also want to remind everyone that there is a direct link to our committee on the town website. So you can go right on the town website, your hot topics, where the, that flame icon is. Directly look into um, our schedule and our meeting minutes and our documents. Um, so thank you. Thank you very much, Jessica. Anybody else? <clears throat> no? OK. Then we'll move on to the finance committee report. Jim? Well, what you have in front of you is um, the fourth iteration of the uh, sort of capstone, if you will, our, our uh, single page report to um, uh, get us uh, the key uh, numbers in our town. And um, I want to thank Michael uh, for listening to my pushback on a couple of issues and trying to make this a little simpler for everybody to understand. But what you see here today is um, and then, you know, basically an overview of key revenues, current year versus previous, and the change. And then we've added a new column, on track or not, which is either, you know, it either is or isn't. And then um, what I asked Michael to do this, this week, which is, uh, which is right there, there are notes that address the key components in that section. So it gives you a snapshot of where, where the, the town management feels we are relative to the number. And the second part is the expenditures. And you can see we've got health insurance, police overtime, public works overtime, uh, the diesel and gasoline cost, as well as vehicle maintenance, salt, debt service, and legal services. These could change on a monthly basis based upon where they are in relationship to performance. But you can see they're either, they're either on track or not. And then below that section, you'll notice the notes that explain the elements that were in that particular section. Um, Michael's also added at the bottom other news, which just gives you some of the financial changes that have taken place in the last month, giving us heads up that we had a $4 million borrow for the library project and a 1.75 borrowing for the five school projects, and also reaffirming with our Moody's um, AA1 bond rating. Um, it also reiterates we've already had our um, finance committee meeting to discuss the municipal budget. And then uh, the last couple of sections there are um, for your information. Um, in one of our previous uh, reports, there was a request made by uh, councilors to have the debt status of our town. Uh, we are currently at 13807 uh, uh, Retiring this year would be a little over $2 million. We added, as I just described, a 5.450 in new debt. 
uh, which gives us a project projected balance at the end of this fiscal year of 6-30-2015 of $17,247,295. So I think that, you know, we've come a long way in four months. We're getting there. Um, I, I will, if you have tweaks or suggestions or things that you'd like to see, um, I would, um, in, you know, uh, welcome any feedback whatsoever. Uh, bottom line is that, uh, you know, this is my sixth year on the council and in the previous uh, five, we didn't have a one-pager like this. We were asked to read the uh, 25 or 28 pages of detail, which uh, would uh, make your eyes gloss over. Uh, but this gives you um, a chance to see at a snapshot what we are, uh, what the current finances of the town are. Uh, Michael and I discussed a little earlier that we're going to try to get this out to you before our meetings on a go-forward basis. That way you have a chance to analyze it when you do your homework for tonight's meeting and ask the, the appropriate questions either before or at this meeting. So um, I hope this is helpful, but um, in our role as town council, I think it's important that this be uh, an agenda item that has a little more robust information. So. Any uh, questions for me or for Michael? Yeah. Jessica? Yes, thanks. Um, yeah, I was the one that asked for debt status, and so I, I'm very appreciative to see that. And I love this on track call. I mean, I think it's great because it shows where we are, where we want to be, and, and our relationship to that. So thank you very much. Yeah. Well, I think that, you know, I, I'll give the hats off to, to Michael to adding the column. Um, when he added the column, there, were, there was no explanation to where we were in relationship to on or off track. So that's why we added the, the notes at the, at the end of the, each section. So again, it's pretty, um, uh, it's a snapshot. It's, it's it, you know, in any business or any, any enterprise, having a one pager like this is really important, especially um, if that's one of our roles and responsibilities. Thank you. Other questions? Um, so, Jim, I guess I would just add, and thank you so much, and to Mike, for both of you. Um, you will put this on to all of us ahead of the time. Will this be with the agenda and available on the website for everybody to see on an ongoing basis? Well, I, I, I'd like to commit to that as a yes, except that this has been one of those uh, work in progress that probably didn't get finalized until late Thursday. But I think we will take your feedback and we'll see if we can try to get it done for that Wednesday. Oh, okay. But clearly, we wanted to get it to you before the meeting going forward. It's just that we didn't button this up until late Thursday. Okay. okay. But I think even if, as a point of record, if it wasn't beforehand downloaded for uh, the records, I think it's a really good tool for not only the council who's, you know, immersed in the budgeting, but for the community. This is a great place for them to go quickly and look at sure. where we stand as a town. So thank you for thank all you. your work. Great. Other questions for Jim? I have two other items. Okay. Um, uh, tomorrow at four o'clock, we um, we have a special um, budget review meeting uh, to go over the community services budget um, from the schools. The school board will be presenting that to us at four o'clock. This was a, a reschedule from uh, April, April 27th, where we intended to cover this but because the director of uh, the community services department would not be available on the 27th due to a family uh, wedding on the weekend, we decided to have a, um, a special meeting tomorrow. So those of you that are interested in the community services uh, budget, um, that will be discussed tomorrow evening. And uh, we threw uh, the invitation out to uh, all counselors. We originally were going to have a subgroup of this group, and as it turns out, we have everyone um, except Kathy Ray, who is going to be otherwise detained, um, coming tomorrow night. So uh, that will be at 4 o'clock in this chamber. And other than that, thank you, Kathy. That was it? I thought you had two. No? What's that? I thought you had two. Well, the, the second was the 27th is scheduled for the school board. And um, I think that there, there is a bit of, uh, there is a, a difference in tomorrow's um, meeting. We're going to review this budget but it hasn't been voted upon by the school board. So it's a little bit out of sync, if you will, with the way things normally work. Normally we will, have, we will be going over on the 27th the school board's approved budget, which would have included the approved community service budget. 
but tomorrow they have already reviewed the community services budget but have not officially voted for it. So what we're seeing is um, preliminary in some ways, a draft. <laughs> a draft. Um, it's a little unusual, but what we're trying to do is accommodate the Director of Community Services, and I think based on the feedback from last year's budget meeting, um, which I shared, we felt that the Director of Community Services should be present when that budget is being presented, just in case there are any questions. So it's a little bit unusual, but um, so tomorrow for Community Services, the 27th, which is a Monday night, we will be going over the school board budget. Other than that, thank you. Thank you, Jim. <clears throat> okay, then moving on to citizen opportunity for discussion of items not on the agenda. If you're here to speak to the council about items that are not on the agenda, uh, please step forward. Um, we'll ask you to keep your remarks to three minutes. And if I don't see anybody get up, I will start to move on. If you're here to speak about something on the agenda, Hold your comments and we'll get to you. All right, seeing no one, we'll move on to the town manager's report. Yes, uh, thank you, Chairman Ray. I just wanted to mention briefly that for, for many years, Steve Harding has served as our town, en town engineer. And it was originally when he was with Oast Associates, uh, they had an office out at the mall. And when we first started with them, I think they had about 20 staff members. Well, AMEC, uh, Oast got bought out by AMEC, and then AMEC got bought out by Foster Wheeler. And what was a firm of about 25 became a firm of about 30,000. Uh, that was our engineer with you know international offices, and it, it really wasn't a good fit for us. And uh, Steve, though, decided to leave the firm and went to work for Sebago Technics, which is a is a local firm. The the, the other person who does all of our site plan reviews uh, as well uh, decided to leave the firm as well. Uh, so you know we, we were left with. Do we, do we follow Steve or do we stay with a firm that really wasn't the firm that we were utilizing services? So anyway, we, effective uh, last, the end of last week, we, we switched our engineering services to Sebago Technics, but it is with the understanding that we're going to issue a request for qualifications and do a review of our engineering services. But in the, in the short term, we needed to, to do something. We wanted to make sure there was a continuity of, of service to the different boards and uh, the others that need engineering services. So I wanted to update you on that. So thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, okay, so moving on to, oh, I'm sorry, did anybody have any questions for Mike? No. All right, moving on to the review of draft minutes of March 9th and March 16th. Unless anybody oppo um, is opposed to this, I'd just as soon take these together. So is there a motion to accept? Thank you, Jessica. I move that we accept the draft minutes of March 9, 2015 and March 16, 2015. And is there a second? I'll Thank second. Thank you, Molly. Okay. Um, any changes, errors, omissions? No. All right. Then all in favor? None opposed. Okay. Moving on to item 47, 2015, in by the sea annual licenses. Um, it is proposed to approve the annual malt spiritus and vinous licenses and special amusement permit for the Inn by the Sea. Um, is there a motion to accept? So moved. Thank you, Jim. Is there a second? Thank you, Jamie. Um, questions? Just Mike. want to thank the, uh, the new manager of the Inn by the Sea for being here. Maybe you wish to introduce yourself sure. briefly. Sorry, they can't hear you unless Sorry, you that's, right. that's all right. Yeah. No, uh, Jim Glanville just joined the Inn by the Sea back in uh, December and uh, excited to be here. My longtime Cape Elizabeth ties, my wife was born here a long time ago, so we're happy to be back. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> long time. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> 25 years. Oh, there you go. Thank you. All right, then. Um, no other questions? Then um, all in favor? None opposed. Thank you. Um, next is item 48, 2015, uh, collaboration with Scarborough for assessing services. 
Michael, did you want to introduce this? Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Chairman Ray. Just, just very briefly, the town council, uh, many years in their goals, although I, I, oddly enough, not this year, uh, has had as, as one of the goals to look for collaboration uh, and to regionalize services as much as possible. One of the areas that's been on our radar for some time has been assessing services. Uh, you know, we're very pleased, obviously, with our current assessing services through through Matt Sturgis, and uh, he's he's very well regarded in the field. In fact, he, he's so well regarded uh, that Scarborough uh, lost their assessor. Uh, he 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 went up to Lewiston to serve as their assessor, and they uh, Tom Hall, the manager in Scarborough, approached me uh, to to collaborate with Scarborough. The, the collaboration is that approximately 40% of uh, Matthew's time would be provided to Scarborough or two days a week. Uh, the other three days a week would be provided to Cape Elizabeth. Uh, the savings to Cape Elizabeth is around $34,000 a year, even after we, we look at some additional costs because of the additional responsibility uh, that, that Matthew would have. Uh, we do have a, a draft in a local agreement. It's not in final form. Uh, uh, but you know that is something that that would need to be signed. Uh, you know, once the attorney, the attorneys reviewed it. Uh, the the proposal is that this be effective upon the Scarborough Town Council, uh, also approving the agreement, and that is due to occur in another week or so, uh, next week sometime. So, uh, you know, I think it, it's a, it's a really good fit uh, for Cape Elizabeth and Scarborough. In fact, when the Municipal Operations Review Committee was looking at opportunities. Uh, back a few years ago, they particularly looked at Scarborough and uh, thought it, that that it was a reasonable was a reasonable fit. What's you know, we do have other interlocal agreements. The city of Portland provides our dispatch services for us as well as South Portland. Uh, city of South Portland provides our animal control services. This is interesting. This is the the first interlocal agreement where we provide the service uh, for one or one of our neighboring communities and. You know, we, we, we do believe that, you know, there will be further consolidation uh, of assessing services. The county uh, also has an assessing operation uh, for various reasons. We don't think that's the best fit for Cape Elizabeth. Uh, this, you know, Matthew's, uh, you know, key office would still be here in Cape Elizabeth. The majority of his time would be here in Cape Elizabeth. Some might ask, you know, why does Cape need 60 and Scarborough need 40? Scarborough still has another full-time assessor where, where we don't. A woman by the name of Susan Russo, who, who Matt has met with a couple of times, has known anyway, but has met with a couple, a couple of times, chatted with her over the last couple of weeks as, as this has evolved. So, anyway, you know, the, the assessor is appointed by the town council. It's a, it's a provision in our charter, and you know, it, there's not no change in the proposal of, of who the assessor is for Cape Elizabeth. Uh, the only change is that the time would be more uh, would be divided uh, to Scarborough as well. You know, people might ask, you know, what's the loss? You know. We, how do you get by with, with you know an assessor without as much time? And you know part of it is you know we've, we've relied on Matthew to do other projects quite quite a bit. You know for example staffing the senior citizen advisory committee, he probably won't have as much time to do some th those types of things. And you know I, I did receive an email from someone saying well, why didn't you do this a few years ago? And you know we we just completed a revaluation in which took a considerable period of time. And you know our assessment ratio is now about 97, 98 percent, I believe. So, you know, it, it's a good time to do it. We're in good shape. Uh, the consolidation is taking place, and you know I think it's it's very good for us to be able to keep a staff member as qualified as uh, and as dedicated as Matthew is. So, I'd be happy to answer any questions. And Matthew's here as well. Uh, should you have any questions for him? Thank you, Michael. Questions, Jim. Uh, just a couple of points that I'd like to make about the uh, some of the some of the numbers. Um, you're talking about a Cape Elizabeth um, assessed valuation of 1.6 billion and 4,000 properties. Um, combined with um, Scarborough, it would raise the assessed valuation of 5.7 billion in, in just the sheer volume, and over 14,000 properties. So when you consider the, the, the scope and range of the responsibilities, it certainly is um, a very different uh, situation. Um, again, um, thank you, Michael, for mentioning the, uh, the, uh, you know, the evaluation of operations here in Cape Elizabeth five years ago. I mean, back then, people were really very intent on more collaboration with local communities because um, 
government is expensive, especially when you're replicating services in every single town. So, so my hat's off to uh, the town of Scarborough and to Michael for uh, engaging in this conversation because I think that at the end of the day, I think it's uh, in everybody's best interest. Um, and um, uh, we're lucky to have Matt um, on board. Uh, it's considered by his peers and for other communities one of the best. And uh, I think that uh, sharing his uh, expertise between these two towns, I think we're both going to benefit in many ways from what he's going to provide for services. So, again, I'm in support of, uh, of this particular provision and uh, look forward to uh, getting updates on a periodic basis. So. Does anybody else have a question for Michael? Molly. I have a question. Michael, this is proposed to be a one year agreement. <laughs> Can you speak to what happens at the end of the year? Yeah, it is initially proposed to be a one year agreement. The, the plan would be we, we would renew the agreement after the one year. Uh, the, the plan also is we would look to see if, if anyone else was ready to partner with us, uh, you know, to uh, moving forward and then, you know, we'd, we'd see what the options are, are at that point. But, uh, you know, I, I think the one-year agreement is, you know, any agreement you have when you begin like this, you, you've got to make sure the marriage, you know, this isn't like a regular marriage, this is a chance to get out of it after a year. Uh, but, you know, but, you know, clearly if, if this did not approve, you know, I think Matthew knows that that this is based on higher responsibility and higher salary based on responsibility. And, you know, if this fizzles out, you know, Cape Elizabeth wouldn't be able to afford uh, the, the pay that's proposed. Thank you. Is that what you wanted me to answer? Yeah, that is what I wanted you to answer. You didn't questions? orchestrate that either. <laughs> Any other questions? Is there a motion to accept? Jim? Uh, yeah, someone from the public might wish to speak. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. Thank you. Please come forward. <clears throat> I should have asked for that up front. Hi, Chris Straw, 597 Shore Road. Just wanted to give a plug on this point. Um, I've lost track of the number of conversations I've had with people in town on this exact issue over the last five or six years. Our, our town assessor may be the greatest one in Maine, but people have often said to me, how is this a full-time job? Um, I think the town manager should be commended. I think this is a wonderful opportunity. I'm really glad to see that you guys are moving forward on this, hopefully. Um, and again, the town manager should be commended, and it's a great opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Did anybody else want to speak about this issue? No? Okay. Just Michael? very briefly, I, I'm having trouble hearing tonight, so I might not have picked up everything. But, uh, you know, I really want to thank Matthew for his willingness to do this. And, uh, you know, there's a lot more responsibility and, uh, you know, I would not have proposed this if I didn't feel that we had an assessor who could make it work and, and accomplish it, and we do, so thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think we're back to Jim. So um, should I be reading exactly what's here written in front of us, Michael, or is this? It, what, what, I'd, what I'd like to see is uh, that you authorize me to sign an interlocal agreement for collaboration with the town of Scarborough for assessing services in, in uh, meeting the, the outline as described in this item. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Patty. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? All in favor? None opposed. Okay, um, so um, we're moving on to item 49, 2015, and I'm assuming that there's some people in the audience that might want to speak to this, so we'll take those comments up front. If you have something to say, please. Peter, do a little intro for us? Yes, certainly. Peter, would you like to introduce this item? Uh, sure. And then after that, if somebody wants to speak to us, if you'd come up to the podium, um, I'm going to give you three minutes, and we're going to keep it to 15 minutes total time. Thank you. Good evening. <coughs> uh, I'm Peter Curry, the chair of the planning board, and um, you have before you a memorandum from the planning board with a response to the council's request for evaluation of the uh, some of the open uh, zoning matters, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, resulting from the comprehensive plan, most recently from the future open space preservation committee. Um, I won't subject you to a 
blow by blow walk through the memorandum. It's fairly long and gets complex in spots. What I'd like to do is just give you a brief overview um, and then take any questions you might have. And I'd, with your permission, I'd like to draw on our excellent uh, staff support, Maureen, to help me answer some of those questions, which uh, may exceed my ability. The um, first and foremost, we saw our mission here uh, to be responsive to your request. Um, in 2013, um, you asked the board to consider the remaining uh, open, uh, comprehensive plan recommendations to deal with the Open Space Preservation Committee's recommendations. And uh, we have done pretty much just that. And you'll find the format of your memo goes through and identifies the sections uh, that were relevant and our response to each. Uh, taking a top-down look at this, um, we did not have an agenda. We did not go into this intending to uh, expand or contract any particular uh, zoning provision to accommodate or result in less of any particular uh, development <coughs> aspect. We did try to recognize some of the values that uh, the comprehensive event plan is quite uh, emphatic about it as being important to the town, open space, farmland, wildlife habitat, and the like. And you'll see these popping up um, all, again and again throughout our recommendations. There was a lot of focus on these as important town values that we wanted to preserve and facilitate. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this, this is not, this is a basically a growth neutral proposal where growth is indicated in spots, we've, what we've tried to do, I think, is to expand the tools in the toolkit of the town and of the planning board to meet proposals by developers and allow an intelligent, thoughtful development of land that would be consistent with the town values. Um, some of the tools, as an example, the transfer development rights. This is a kind of complex uh, matter. It's probably not used a great deal, but it's, uh, we've gone through and, and tried to tie that directly to these various town values. Uh, there's been an effort to uh, basically harmonize some of the requirements uh, that apply to subdivisions and to multifamily housing. Uh, there was a, a disparity that didn't seem to have a reason for it, so we've, we've neutralized that. Um, you will find uh, in the open space uh, provision we've done uh, some fine-tuning, some rationalizing of the language, uh, dealt more directly with how the uh, land preservation will be documented, things of that nature. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the the multiplex uh, uh, housing aspect of this has gotten some attention, has gotten some comment, and we certainly expected it. Uh, I would you know, stress again, this is, this is growth neutral. We are not trying to populate the town of Cape Elizabeth with tons and tons of multifamily housing. It is permitted now in the various districts. And I think we've, what we've tried to do is uh, get the thing a little under control on the notion that someday there may be more of this stuff going on and we'd be better off planning in advance rather than retrospectively for it. Um, you will notice that this uh, multiplex housing is now subject to uh, site plan approval. We go in and we have design requirements on the architecture, on the uh, land layout, much like you find in the town center uh, provisions in the zoning ordinance. We think this is important. Uh, we are also providing some density bonuses uh, for situations where things such as open space, elderly housing, affordable housing uh, are uh, part of the project. Open space is, has been a very uh, common and central theme. We realize that people like the open, rural nature of Cape Elizabeth, the agriculture, uh, and so forth. Um, we have provided in, 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 in the multiplex housing uh, an opportunity for a slightly expanded uh, allowances for uh, density, for building height, uh, if there is more open space dedication, uh, this is not something that has to happen. But part of the, part of the process, we, we think, is to make it possible for a high quality developer to come in and do an economically viable project. The town will benefit 
if there's a, 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 the ability to do a good project. We have this uh, a little bit more on that front. And um, the planning board is quite comfortable with working with developers in a site plan context to make sure the project is done right, that there's plenty of buffering, there's plenty of landscaping, uh, as with, with the greater size under the density permissions, the setbacks are increased. Um, so it is, it's very much of a, a, uh, a working relationship with more tools in the hands of the planning board to do a good job for the town. I think with that, I will uh, stop. Maureen, if there's anything else that you think I should add, and uh, happy to turn over to council uh, questions or sit down and let the, uh, the public have their say. Thank you very much, Peter. We'll hold on to you for a minute. If, okay. If, if you want to have a seat, we'll uh, take some comments, and then if we have something else, we'll, we'll call on you. Thank you. Okay. So, people from the audience that would like to speak to this issue, please uh, keep your remarks to three minutes. Are you timing? Yes. Thank you. Hello. Uh, again, uh, Chris Straw, 597 Shore, no Shore Road. Uh, thank you all for your service and thank you for your time tonight. Uh, I realize that this will probably end up going to the ordinance subcommittee, but in the past when I've brought up issues that I've had with the ordin proposed ordinance changes, I've often been said, oh, try to bring them up earlier, which is why I want to touch on this tonight. So uh, I'm going to provide you a quick overview. Uh, I'm then going to address the memo from the planning board, and then I'm going to touch on two proposed changes that are in the, the planning board's uh, proposed changes. So as you know, the town adopted a revised comprehensive plan a few years ago, and you, the town council, tasked the planning board with revising the various ordinances in order to implement this, this comprehensive plan. Uh, now, I don't agree with everything that's in the comprehensive plan. I have different views on how the town should develop and what in the plan. But that being said, it is our plan, so I'm not going to critique the plan right now. What I want to focus on is the planning board's proposed changes. And much of what the planning board has proposed is in keeping with the comprehensive plan. Again, I don't agree with them, but much of it is in keeping with the comprehensive plan. That said, as always, the devil is in the details. The planning board has provided you a memo that summarizes many of its changes. That said, being a summary, it does not cover all the changes. Please, please, please read those changes in detail because they are not all reflected in the memo. In particular, um, I want to touch on two of those changes. One. Uh, some of you, I think, might have been on the Board of Zoning Appeals. The Planning Board has proposed, one, one of the provisions in this, these proposed changes is that the Planning Board be given the power to waive setback requirements. There's no restriction on that. It's literally, they can set setback requirements anywhere in town where someone has made a modification to a house to zero. Zero lot lines, that's what they proposed with almost no oversight. It's simply if the change is deemed innovative, there's no guidance as to what is innovative. It appears to just be left to the whims of four members of the planning board to waive setback requirements anywhere in town. That is nowhere, as near as I can tell, anywhere in the comprehensive plan. It's not comp uh, comprehended by, it's not, comp uh, it's not covered by the comprehensive plan, and I encourage you to, at a minimum, strike that provision. Second point, and this is my last point, there's also a provision such that a unit is not actually a unit. Now you might say, what are you talking about? There's a provision that's inserted that says that if the unit is under a particular number of square footage, it's not counted as one unit, it's counted as less than a unit. And if you play out, if you tease out how the ordinance operates once you start factoring that in, it actually is, can in many cases double the number of units that can go in on a lot. So you'll see in cases where there's like a three acre lot in Stony Brook, on Oakhurst, up in the Mountain View Park area, any three acre lot, there's a possibility that you could uh, shoehorn in 14, 15, something like that units into that three acre lot. So that is not what is comp uh, com uh, contemplated by the comprehensive plan. It's not in keeping with the comprehensive plan. And that, that uh, ratcheting up provision where a unit is not a unit, as near as I can tell, has no support in the comprehensive plan. So in summary, I would strike out that unit is not a unit provision and I would strike out the provision giving the planning board the ability to waive setback requirements. That belongs with the ZBA. The ZBA has procedures that it follows. They're very carefully laid out. There's a very carefully laid out uh, appeals process. Leave that with the ZBA. Do not give that power to the planning board. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Is there anybody else? Good evening. Thank you, Madam Chair and Town Council. My name is Tony Owens. I live in 19 Seaview Avenue. 
I've been a town resident for 40 years, and I'm here to speak in opposition primarily to the multiplex part of the planning board proposal. I draw your attention, um, as I'm sure you do periodically, to reflect back on the 2005 Critical Insights uh, survey that was done of 303 town residents <clears throat> with a great response rate that looked at a lot of the issues around the town, what we liked, what we didn't like, what we could do better. And particularly on the uh, executive summary that you have on pages 17 and 18, <clears throat> there's a discussion of some of the goals. And there was an 80% positive response to preserving open space, preserving the rural character, and to protecting farmland. The least important, polling less than 50%, were to change the variety of housing, improve the town center, and attract commercial development. Contrary to what we've been led to believe with this plan, 70% of Cape residents over 65, which includes me, having just had my birthday, um, were cited as being satisfied with the housing in Cape Elizabeth. And looking for senior housing was not a priority for them. 80% of the same people disagreed with the idea that we needed family, multifamily housing in Cape Elizabeth. Finally, regarding the document itself, and this pertains to what Mr. Strahl just said, uh, in every instance where there was a change or addition with the red lines or an addition in red type, it was made to loosen or lessen the restrictions, increase the height allowances, reduce the required acreage, changed the definition of how the unit was to be sited on their property, all giving more flexibility to the developer, and it was almost as though the developer had actually written the ordinance themselves. As mentioned, I've lived here uh, 40 years, and I occupy that demographic of a senior citizen. I have many friends in Cape with whom I meet regularly, and the idea of us needing multiplex senior citizen housing has just never come up on my radar screen. So finally, either the planning board thinks they know better than the citizens of Cape Elizabeth, or we've maybe changed our minds since that 2005 survey. If that indeed's the case, I think perhaps it's worthwhile asking us again after 10 years have lapsed, do we really want to see this sort of development in multiplex housing? Thank you. Thank you very much. Good timing. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Sarah Lennon. I live at 54 Cranbrook Drive. No, no. Um, when my husband Paul tries to help me with math problems, the poor guy, he encourages me to get out a pad of paper and do all the numbers and try my hardest. And then he says, step back hold it out in front of you, and ask yourself, does this answer make sense? And about half the time I do it, I hold it out and I say, you know, this makes no sense at all. And I have to go back and I have to work it out again. And that's exactly what I'm going to encourage you guys to do. I think you need to take a mile high look now. Um, and I need to think you need to ask yourself, what is this actually going to look like on the ground? Because it sounds great in theory. People have been hashing over details. They've been close in. They've been doing the numbers. but I think it's your job now to ask, what do the citizens of Cape Elizabeth want? Is this open space that we gain worth risking what we will in our neighborhoods, the close-knit sense of it, the intimacy, the livability, and frankly, the aesthetics of them? So far, every committee and board that's worked to create this proposal and the comp plan and the land use chapter um, has been headed by our town planner. Uh, that's her job, but these committees include the Comprehensive Planning Committee, the Future Open Space Committee, the Town Center Planning Committee, the Conservation Committee, the Planning Board, and next up, the Ordinance Committee. She's also the staff advisor to the Town Council on all issues pertaining to land use. In other words, we've had one person escorting these ideas through the process, and I think it's time for a variety of viewpoints to weigh in. Not only all of you, but I think it's incumbent upon you to listen to uh, citizens before you move this forward. So. If I were still on the council, I would urge my colleagues to take this to workshop before sending it to one more subcommittee for further uh, detailed work. 
Um, I think in a workshop, it's the perfect opportunity for you to look big picture, to hash it out, debate, talk to each other, and ask uh, some questions that I know I would be asking if I were on the council. For example, who is asking for this diversity of housing? Um, I now hang around 20-somethings, my children are teenagers in 20s, and I can tell you that <laughs> the, the idea of living in Cape Elizabeth when they get out of college, they would laugh out loud. It, it, would, it would be the last thing on their list they would want to do. If they even wanted to move back here, they would go to Portland. I know we've all driven through here on a Saturday night at 10 o'clock. Lights out, nobody home, all of us old folks are in bed reading a good book. So I'm just wondering who these 20 people, 20 some people are. Um, are there already ample choices for, for the younger people and the um, empty nesters to live in? And is there already a flexible enough ability to build more should the uh, need arise? I think the answer to that is yes. Um, is the now nine-year-old land use chapter still relevant? Does it make sense to um, tweak and edit that chapter rather than changing our existing laws? Um, and would you guys want a five-story multiplex um, apartment building or condo next to your house? And I think if the answer to that is no, then you need to think about whether it's OK to approve that for someone else. In short, before sending this to another subcommittee, I would urge you to go big picture, schedule a workshop, have a conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, counselors. My name is Paul Seidman. I live at 21 Oakview Drive. I have a question for each of the counselors to address tonight. Uh, for the rest of us here and for those watching at home, what this quote means in reality. Quote, when more than 45% of the gross acreage of the development parcel shall remain as open space outside of the building's footprints, parking areas or other developed areas excluding open space improvements and any areas assigned to individual dwelling units, a density bonus of one unit per 40,000 square feet of preserved open space above 45% may be applied to the development." Unquote. Before you pass along proposals to overworked volunteers, you ought to be able to tell us exactly what the detailed consequences are of turning these recommendations into permanent law. Too much is at stake to promote incomprehensible land use lingo as responsible legislating. Letting the Ordinance Committee try and figure out, try and figure it out isn't responsive, it's expedient. I don't believe thousands of people voted you into office to be expedient or to avoid public discussion of irrefutably false data and incorrect assumptions as detailed in a report sent to each of you a week and a half ago. When I told my neighbor, a resident for decades, a mild-mannered 83-year-old woman about the purpose of tonight's agenda item, she said, quote, I do not feel the town should start this large building plan, but what I would like to know, why is this matter, why is this matter being voted on by the town council and not put on a ballot for all of Cape residents to vote on? Why are just a few deciding the fate of the town? This is such a big matter. I am sure there are lots of residents that aren't able to attend the council meeting for various reasons. Like me, I don't drive at night. They would like a voice in this important decision." Unquote. She added, quote, I am violently opposed to multi-occupancy buildings in Cape Elizabeth. Unquote. Councilors, I leave it to you to either stop this now or put it up to a vote for the citizens of, to the citizens of the town who may finally get to know what's going on. Thank you. Thank you. And we have time for one more person. Yes? Yes, sir. More worthies than myself here, perhaps, but I'll say quickly, my name is Richard Gilbane. I, when I'm in Cape Elizabeth, I live at 226 Bowery Beach Road at the uh, pleasure of my dear wife. I'm a native of Providence, Rhode Island, <clears throat> where one of the projects I did as a builder it's a 170-unit uh, multi-residential project, and um, and, I'm, and I often, majority of my work's in Texas, where I go to Austin and often live in the midst of multi-unit housing. I 
would ask, do not do it. You'll get professional leadership and advice from planning departments, and they'll go to meetings with their peers, and it's sort of tough to go, and everyone's talking about their neat new, you know, Leeds Gold multi-unit multi residential. Um, but don't fall into that peer pressure, because they have it, we need it. Cape Elizabeth is a, I have a love affair with coming back here. So keep the best that we have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, I did not thank the planning board for its report, but I apologize and I thank you now. Um, so tonight we're here to um, look at the proposed ordinance amendments and I assume we've all read them in their entirety. And um, the proposal is to refer this recommendation to the Ordinance Committee um, yes, to get back to the Council as soon as possible. Yes, Jim. Just could I ask, I, I know that we limit uh, public uh, comment to 15 minutes, but I just wonder if there are people who want to talk to us, should we consider expanding the public comment? I just, again, it's a more... Well, let me ask the question. Is there anybody else that would like to speak to us if you'd raise your hand? Two. Two? Does the Council... Um, is the council all right with having two more people? Yes, yes then please okay, come up. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for bringing that up, Jim. Yeah. I didn't mean to cut people off. I was just trying to fill out our requirements. Hi, I'm Suzanne McGinn, 1180 Shore Road. Um, and I've been following what's been going on with the planning board for a little while. And I keep on going back to a critical insight survey of 2005 where 83% of Cape residents surveyed, which is our most recent data, those citizens value protecting and preserving wetlands, ponds, and wooded areas and preserving the town's rural character. In that same survey, 61% of the residents clearly stated we strongly disagree with having multi-unit buildings here. In addition, there is no specific language in the comprehensive plan that speaks to allowing a density bonus where a developer can install a five-story building. Page uh, 23, line 13 of your document, uh, density bonus for multiplex that preserves more than 45% of land and open space. Each additional acre preserved gives the multiplex one more unit. By its very nature, an apartment building is going to have a smaller footprint than a subdivision and will surely enable the developer to preserve 50, 60, even 70 percent of the land, especially since doing so lets them expand the footprint to 10,000 square feet and a height of 50 feet. The developer is really getting a lot for nothing here. And I could go on with I would ask that you read in detail page 22. Um, and in addition, when it talks about agricultural land being permanently preserved, uh, the open space design standards with the density bonus of one unit per 30,000 square feet of agricultural land preserved may be applied to the development. The agricultural land may be located on the development parcel or anywhere in the town and must meet the requirements of the farmland under the MRSA sections 10, uh, 1101 to 1121 farmland tax law, but does not need to be registered under the state program. If you follow through the 120 acre development scenario given earlier in the ordinance open space zoning ag parcel, 48 acres need to be set aside with at least 16 usable acres. Leaving 72 acres at 66,000 per lot equals 45 lots in the RB. If 35 acres of this land mandated to be set aside were farmland and then an additional bonus lot is given for each of 30,000 square feet which would give an additional 46 units in density, it appears that the total bonus allowed shall not exceed 30 percent of the density, which for 45 lots would be an additional 13 lots. So in total, if you put a multiplex on farmland, uh, they will let, it will let you expand footprint from 75 to 10,000, go to 50 feet instead of 35 feet, and uh, will throw in an additional 13 units. So I have several concerns with this amendment package. The proposed increase from three to five story multiplex buildings to be built on a three acre lot reduced from a five acre minimum 
I'm sure there's some people in Cape Elizabeth who live next to a five acre lot would be very saddened when it's three acres. This type of development, whether it be in the town center or within any neighborhood with a three acre lot, does not align with the current aesthetic within Cape. This type of housing, often referred to as smart growth development, can work well in a large community, but Cape is a small suburban town. Such a change of loosening Cape's building restrictions will forever erode the rural character of our town. Could you what? Yep. finish up again? I just have like one more minute? No, 30 no, seconds? No, you don't. <laughs> Should I stop? Um, yeah, 15 seconds maybe. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I, my recommendation is that we halt the amendment package. Do not send it to the Ordinance Committee at this time. We should next conduct the identical critical sites survey, which was done in 2005. Find out if the sentiments have changed at all and start work on, our, on a new updated comprehensive plan, given that our population has shifted within our community and decreased. I find a disconnect between the survey results and our 2007 comp plan recommendations. Thanks. Thank you. Hello, I'm Elizabeth Goodspeed, 59 Belfield Road. Um, before purchasing my home, I went onto the town website and researched in detail what was allowed in each residential district. And it was a significant factor in deciding where we bought our house. And I think I would ne never thought I would say this, but I'm actually really thankful um, that we have a homeowners association protection. Um, for someone who doesn't have the protection of an HOA, it would be completely unfair to them to have purchased a home under one set of rules, only to have those rules changed in a way that not only negatively impacts their quality of life, but also the value of their property. And specific concerns that I have that were not clear in the member, memo, excuse me, um, the density bonus um, that other people have addressed here, page 22, um, I think Suzanne and I were doing similar math. Um, if you develop on agricultural land, um, it provides the developers a lot of extra benefits for very little in return. Um, you know, they can get an expanded footprint from 7,500 to 10,000 square feet. They get 50 feet in height instead of 35 feet in height. And, you know, if you're working on the 120, uh, um, acre development proposal, you know, they could get an additional 13 units. Um, number two, micro units on page 13. I believe that each unit should really count as one unit, not 0.5 units, not 0.66 units. Um, and then also open preservation um, on page 15 and 16. The way the rules are currently written, um, it's quite explicit how on which lands are preserved as open space, how they're used, how developers and homeowners associations should maintain and pay for that space. Um, but the wording surrounding this has really been um, significantly watered down um, in the proposed changes, and I just don't feel that that's adequate. Um, and finally, I strongly feel that this plan something this large in scope, these changes, should not even be discussed right now when it is just so far off from where the 2005 survey, um, what the 2005 survey results showed. Um, and I really encourage that this process be slowed down and not sent on to the Ordinance Committee tonight until we've had further discussion and also a, um, another survey is perhaps even sent to the town. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to make this the last person. I hope everybody feels that they got a chance. Thanks, Kathy, for um, letting me speak. Uh, Mary Townsend, 5 Pearl Street. Um, a couple of quick questions. Um, I'm wondering what the rush is to rush this to ordinance. It's a process question for myself. I don't, I guess I, I'm not sure about the process of the council. Um, and then the process of the changes. Um, why are we making uh, these changes right now if we're sticking with a comprehensive plan and if we're not to, uh, trying to encourage growth? If we're truly, um, it's a plan that's not trying to encourage growth, why are we providing bonuses? And um, why are we increasing, um, you know, increasing the size of buildings? Um, so those are just some questions that I've thought about. And what, um, what would be the harm in sending this to workshop with you guys? Because you are our voices and our eyes. Um, so what would be uh, the harm in sending this to workshop instead of 
passing it along to ordinance. Um, and there may be a good reason for that, but um, I, I'd really, I, I'd like to know what the process is. So thank you, and thanks, Kathy, for giving me a minute. Sure. Okay, so um, I think we're done for uh, that piece, um, but I will say that um, there's always a chance to communicate with the town council by email, and I think we've gotten several of them, maybe in just the last day or so. And um, part of the process is um, to normally send this to a subcommittee, so the subcommittee can vet it a little bit longer, um, but it does come back to the town council, and there are uh, more opportunities for public input, and oftentimes we do have uh, public hearings. Um, so, um, Having said that, um, the proposal tonight is to refer this to the Ordinance Committee to do some more work and come back to the Council as soon as practic practicable. <laughs> I'm mm. not saying it right, but anyway. Um, so um, I guess I'd ask if there is a motion to send it to the Ordinance Committee. I'll make a motion, but I wasn't going to send it to the Ordinance Okay. I'd like to make a motion to send this to a workshop. I'd much rather hear the inputs of everybody on this council in an open discussion than take it to the Ordinance Committee at this point. Is there a second on that? I'll second that. Okay, Molly. Discussion? Oh, Jamie, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. Yeah, no, as a chair of the Ordinance Committee, I, I agree with Caitlin. I think that we could use the benefit of other councilors before we go to ordinance on this to get uh, the will of the council before we put in all the hard work on this new <clears throat> document. Okay. Patty? Um, I just want to thank um, the committee members for coming out and expressing um, their thoughts <clears throat> and concerns on this. I think it's in a really important process and that we should have um, the opportunity of all this feedback. Um, I think it's a great idea to go to workshop and kind of hash this out and maybe put on the table um, what, what we're feeling and, and maybe addressing some of the concerns that we are here. Um, I guess I will say, uh, like um, many of the members here, I have a, um, had many of the same questions. So I am um, about <coughs> multiplex and concerns with them being a part of our town. And I am um, very happy with the opportunity to kind of get some of those questions um, answered in this process. Thank you. Jim? Uh, could I either ask Peter or Maureen um, a question about how many, how many workshops were held Certainly. Uh, by the planning board, because I, I think it's important that the, that the citizens understand that this didn't just come up yesterday and it hasn't been done behind closed doors, that it's, uh, it's been an open process. And I, you know, I, you know, I take exception with people talking about an overworked group of volunteers, which is just amazing to me, and that if it went to ordinance, it would be not responsive, okay, and expedient. And I just do not believe that that's the way we go about business in Cape Elizabeth. So, I, uh, Peter, how many, how many workshops on this subject? If you would go up to, or one of you or both of you would go up so that it can be heard by people who may be <clears throat> watching or who are <clears throat> recording this to watch later. Hi, Maureen O'Meara. Um, normally I can give you an exact number. On this one, I can't give an exact number because the board was re started working on this in February of 2013 and worked on it for several months. And then it got pushed onto a back burner while they worked on the normal high water line amendment, which I think a lot of you still remember. They put a lot of time in on that. Mm -hmm. And then they went back to this. I would conservatively say at least a dozen workshops. So it was something that they put a lot of time into. And those were open to the public? Every single one of them. And they were all we, published? Well, dates in on addition, the website? There, every single agenda was posted to the website. Every single piece of information was posted to the website. In addition, the planning board held a public forum just on the TDR section of the proposal where we invited, we, we advertised it, we put it on the town's website, and we sent out notices to all the landowners that either had land that were in the TDR areas or potentially we were talking about deleting or adding from the TDR areas. So we actually had a special form on that as well. And then process. Why did this get 
sent to the planning board? Um, this started in 2007 uh, when the council, and you know, I did bring the comprehensive plan, which um, was created by a 10 member committee. That 10 member committee, I believe, and I'm reading from page two of the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan committee met 29 times, including three public forums. Mm -hmm. They did a statistically valid telephone survey. Uh, all of their meetings are open to the public. The lists of their meetings were posted on the town website. That committee came up with this document, which was then reviewed in a joint council and planning board workshop. Mm -hmm. It was then individually reviewed by the planning board in workshops and recommended to the council. The council then held at least, I remember, at least two workshops. The full document was then adopted, I believe it was in the fall of 2007, and the council immediately turned into an implementation group. And uh, the, the high priority recommendations in this document were broken up for the purposes of implementation into five packages. So the first package was updating shoreline zoning, which was a mandatory requirement under state law. There was a package of the BA district, and some of you remember that process, where the BA district was, um, the, the text of the BA district was overhauled, and there was a one minor map change. Uh, there was an overhaul of the subdivision ordinance, and that was adopted, I think, a year and a half ago. Um, there was a set of amendments to amend the town's treatment of agricultural uses. So those are four packages, and the land use amendments is the fifth package. So that's what's been happening along the way, is these mm -hmm. packages have been worked on as time permitted. In addition, the land use package, there, it was started um, in the late 2000s. There was a concern that this package was moving ahead before the open space recommendations were being implemented. So the council said stop. The future open space preservation committee was created. That committee met for a year coming up with recommendations. Those recommendations were reported back to you, I believe at the end of 2012. And the council then said, okay, planning board, <coughs> with the recommendation of the FOSS committee, restart the land use package, take these recommendations from the FOSS committee, and put together this package. And the planning board, frankly, struggled a little because they had a lot of other work on their plate, but it is now finished. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Um, you know, I'm in favor of uh, moving to a workshop um, because I think there's, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of conversation, a lot of questions, and I'm, I'm happy to hear people weigh in on this subject. But even if it went to ordinance, there was a question Mary Townsend had about process. It would have gone to ordinance, and ordinance could have come back to this group and pushed us to a workshop. They could have also abandoned the entire set of recommendations. They could have modified them. Um, so it's, it could have gone back to planning board. I mean, there's, so I think people have to understand that it isn't, the, it isn't an end game, if you will. Um, that's why I take exception to sending into ordinance as being an overworked group of volunteers who are not going to look at this with the same open mind and same sort of long-term futuristic view that, that we've heard about tonight. So I'm in favor of a workshop, but I, I just want to make it very clear that, that, the, uh, <coughs> that a recommendation to go to the ordinance committee was not uh, fait accompli. And I just want to go on record as stating that. Thank you, Jim. Other comments? Jessica? Yeah, I, I have several. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm having, I think, the same hearing problem that Mike had, barotitis media from an airplane ride. So I apologize if I'm speaking too loudly or too softly because I really don't know. <laughs> but anyway, um, several <coughs> comments. Um, I want to thank the planning board because I know they spent hours and hours on looking at all of this. And I think that. Um, they need to be commended for all their hard work. I take issue with some things that have been said this evening. Uh, I think we are all well aware that we have a town planner, very well aware. And I would like to remind us all that the comp plan had a dedicated and diverse group of town volunteers that worked very hard for a 2007 comp plan. That was their document. 
The Future Open Space Preservation Committee on which I served was a 10-member dedicated and diverse group of residents who also worked very hard. And that <coughs> report was their document. So I would like to echo Jim's point in that, you know, th these issues have been studied for a long time and there is, there's nothing that has jumped out of nowhere. And so I think we need to remember the very hard work of very careful people that's been going on for years. And I'm glad that um, uh, Maureen mentioned something. I was going to mention it, so I will anyway, which is the, <clears throat> the planning board was, was scheduled to review land use, or, uh, land use um, uh, ordinances. And <clears throat> but that was postponed with the advent of the future Open Space Preservation Committee. So um, this is something they would have been doing and would have done earlier. Because some of the emails we've been got, getting are saying, well, you know, you, you know, this was so long ago, you need to revisit everything. Well, there are some reasons that some things have been delayed. But this has been under, essentially, constant scrutiny and study. And I think we all need to remember that. There's, there's <clears throat> nothing new that's just come out of left field on any of this. Um, so I, um, I also agree with Jim, I mean, if we, we can certainly go to work, workshop, but again, to, to mention or respond to a comment made, this is the usual process. And ordinance, you know, ordinance committee could look at it, send it to workshop, reject parts or all. Um, so, you know, there's nothing that is, um, I guess I, I would say, out of the ordinary that's occurring here. Um, so I, I would like to just make those points and again thank the people in 2007 that worked for, for two years on that comp plan as well as those of us who worked on FOSS for over a year. And so um, I think those points need to, need to be made. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, I'll take Jamie first and then Molly. I, I just wanted to thank Peter and the members of the planning board for their hard work and for the citizens that came out and spoke tonight. I want to encourage other citizens who are home tonight to give us their thoughts too. I, just as a, I, most of the people that spoke tonight, I could have told you their, their name and their address because I've heard them speak before as many times, and that's fantastic. But I do want to encourage the other citizens to come out and talk to us as well. Thank you. Molly? I'd like to thank everyone as well, both members of the planning board who I know, even before we heard from Maureen tonight, had been through a number of workshops. And, and members of the public who spoke, and also the people who wrote emails. I'd also like to just mention, I have the sense that there's real sensitivity about process all around the room. And I have tremendous respect for the process that folks have been through. My issue and the reason I supported moving to workshop had nothing to do with whether we went through ordinance first or workshop first. My sense was it probably would end up at workshop at some point. My issue was with the underlying concern about where we're headed as a community with our open space, with our setbacks, with our height limitations. And my sense was going to workshop, we'd have the ability to have a better discussion about that up front before sending this to ordinance. And if that is the underlying issue that we need to address, we should talk about that in workshop before we send it to ordinance and spend a lot more time on it. Thank you. Anybody else? No? Okay, so we have a motion on the floor to send this to workshop uh, and a second. Oops, sorry. Um, so, um, all in favor? And opposed? Okay, great. Thank you. We made it through that item. <laughs> Moving on to item 50-2015, Paper Streets. Um, it is recommended to approve a proposed public engagement process for the possible extension of the town's right to so-called Paper Streets. Kath, could we wait a minute? Yeah, can we? We'll wait like two minutes for folks to get up and leave.
think we're, it's quieted down, so we'll, again, we'll move on to item number 50, 2015, um, about approving a proposed public engagement process for the possible extension of the town's right in so-called paper streets. <clears throat> Mike, did you want to speak to this? I, I'd be happy to, uh, Chairman Rick. You know, this, this is a, an unusual item in a, a couple of respects. I think the most unusual aspect of it is, I, I don't know when we've ever began a process where we've adopted or suggested the council adopt a public engagement process at the beginning. You know, we, 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 we just heard discussion, you know, at the, at the previous agenda item of the way process ought to be. And, you know, it, you know so I think too often the process changes along the way without it thinking through. What, what, what's particularly good about this proposal, and, you know, you can agree or disagree with what's in the proposal, but I think it's really healthy that the council is, is looking at the public engagement process at the beginning. And certainly this is in keeping with the council goal that you look at different ways and different opportunities uh, for <coughs> public engagement. Uh, the particular process, uh, I, I did work with Maureen and uh, asked her to draft it, and she uh, did. I, I saw the draft. I thought it was an excellent draft, and uh, I'm happy to, to recommend it and uh, support it. I think, you know, the, the other important thing, to, I think, for everyone to understand uh, is that you know, but this is this is really setting forth a process uh, that will look at all of our paper streets and determine whether or not to renew them, determine what else to do with them, and uh, you know, while the, the deadline for the state for that the state gives us that by which you need to extend these isn't until 2017, sometime, you know, I think we'll probably be the first community in the state that begins this process that really gives everyone time to think, to look, so that, you know, so that it doesn't come to the very last month. And, 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 and as you, know, you look at it, it, it involves you know, a, a process that's open, but also one that, that has some parameters to it. Because one of the criticisms that we get of process is that people don't know where to go and when to make decisions, and it just gets so drawn out that you know, it just gets exhausting for citizens. I think what you know, this particular draft, what it does, it, it, it really has a focus process, and uh, I think that's what uh, makes it worthy of consideration. So, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, so, um, if it's all right, I'd like to ask for a motion to accept this process. Might be some public. Comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there public comment on this? No. Okay. So, is there a motion to accept? Yeah, before I make a yes. motion, could I? Um, just ask a couple of questions. Certainly. Um, first of all, I thought this was a terrific plan. I think we're taking the right approach, involving the public up front. I love the idea of handing this off to Planning Board and Conservation Commission. I did have a question about what the anticipated timing would be on their end. But before we talk through this process, I'm a little concerned that we're getting ahead of ourselves on part two with the neighborhood area meetings um, because after this meeting, we're going into workshop to talk about the recommendations from the appointments committee about further engagement with the public through the council moving out into neighborhood meetings. So we haven't agreed to do that yet, but that gets rolled into this process. I'm just a little uncomfortable with how we move ahead with that if we're not all in agreement that that's what we're planning to do. Michael? You know, uh, through, through the chair, uh, Council Pazl, you know, I, you know, I looked at that when, when I saw the draft, and m my sense is is that is that this is this is a particular issue where it, uh, you know, where it really makes sense to go out into the neighborhoods and to to focus on, you know, most people don't care about the paper streets in other parts of town; mm -hmm. they care about it in the neighborhoods. So, you know, whether or not the council decides with the other plan to do a larger neighborhood meeting thing. I think, you know, particularly for, like, for example, the Shore Acres neighborhood, for some of the area of Cape Cottage Woods, uh, perhaps Delano Park even, which there's still some of these, it really makes sense to, to, to focus the neighborhood. You know, and maybe it's not the neighborhood meeting, as you might define it in your, your future workshop, but well, in this particular case, I do think we, we, we really need to have an opportunity for neighborhood input when neighborhood, neighbors are hearing neighbors. So I, I think I think this is a good recommendation, except even if you decide not to do the larger one. Mm -hmm. 
Anybody else with questions? No? Okay. Then is there a motion to accept this plan? So moved. So moved. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Molly. Um, any other questions? Comments? I would like to thank Maureen for the nice work. Our town planner, who does a fabulous job for putting this together. Um, so, having said that, yes, I Molly. I had a question on the timing for the work to be done with the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board. Are we anticipating that get, that gets done this year? And are we also similarly anticipating that we're headed out this year to neighborhood meetings? Yeah, you know. Go ahead. Yeah, I, you know, th this doesn't have a particular deadline. You know, if the council wishes to impose deadlines, that the council's prerogative. You know, it, the, the hope and desire is that this moves along, you know, for the reasons I stated earlier, because the, 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 the public can only focus for so long without having a million other things to do, and it'd, it'd be nice to, to keep it moving along. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, you know, as we just saw in the previous discussion, uh, no one likes to have the feeling that things are being rushed. Jim? I, again, um, I, I'd just like to reiterate, it's, it's really unfortunate that some of the folks who spoke to us tonight are not sitting here right now listening to us elaborate on how we wish to a better job of listening and understanding what people want and what this town is looking at. And because this is exactly the, we've, we've been lectured many times about, for whatever reason, working in a vacuum, not understanding the current thought process. But this is a classic example of us trying to be proactive and taking a more deliberate approach and more of an outreach. And I, um, I applaud Maureen for the work that she's done to do this, to capture it. But I also think uh, that the issue about neighborhood meetings is, uh, is something that's come from a couple of the conversations we've listened to here in public hearings about, do you really know what the citizens want? And this is a chance to do just that. So I think it's a great idea, and I can't wait for us to put it in place. So. Anyone else? So Molly? <clears throat> I'll just ask you directly, Maureen. Do you have a sense, particularly for the planning board, of what a reasonable amount of time would be for them? It's a, it's a relatively mm -hmm. extensive project, I think, for both planning board and conservation commission. Yeah, planning, board's, planning board isn't the kind of group that rushes through anything. Right. And <laughs> as the council is very well aware, and um, they have a couple of things on their plate right now, and they'll move through this in, in the space that they want to move through it. So I have no way of telling you um, how long it will take them. The Conservation Commission, a little different group. Mm -hmm. um, you know, weather's getting good. They're going to want to get outside soon. I have faith that the Commission can probably get through it in two meetings. That's great. Okay. Thank you. And I'm not trying to speak to process or rush things along or slow it down. I'm just trying to get my head around how long this might take and how we tie all three of those loose ends together at the end. And we have the input from the neighborhood groups and we all report back. And we have the input from the Conservation Commission and we have the input from the Planning Board. And I'm trying to understand is that should we expect that that's going to be done by, I don't know what, the end of the year? Does that sound like a reasonable time? Yeah. My hope when I saw this draft is that most of this would occur in 2015 and the council would be dealing with it again in early 2016. Great. I would hope the council could complete it by a year from tonight. <clears throat> Great. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? No? Then all in favor? None opposed. Um, moving on to the Cottage Brook subdivision, um, is there anyone here that wants to speak to that? Or? Yeah, I, I would very briefly. Th this is very much a technical issue. Uh, you know, th there's always been drainage uh, proposed from the Cottage Brook subdivision that was going to go into the town open space. And you know, as, as more and more lawyers get involved in any particular plan, that they, as, as is mentioned here, uh, there's someone new buying the, the, the multiplex units uh, at the back of the cottage uh, farms subdivision. And uh, 
you know, their lawyer noted that, well, where are the drainage rights to put the drainage onto the, onto the open space, even though the plan shows that it doesn't specifically show the easement to do that. So what this does, it's corrective quit claim deed, that was what the lawyers decided to use, and it clarifies the fact that they do have the right to, to have drainage go down onto the open space as has been planned in the subdivision since it was approved by the planning board. Uh, this is, you know, here under an abundance of caution and just dotting the I and uh, crossing the T. So you would like us to take a vote to, um, um, to, to, to execute a corrective quick claim deed? Yeah, and to authorize me to sign it. In, in this case, unlike a few other things, the, the attorney already has had the final sign off on that it's in uh, form satisfactory to, uh, to the town attorney. Okay, <coughs> is there a motion to do so? Molly? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Jessica, is there any questions? No? All right, all in favor? <coughs> Thank you. Uh, next item, filling a vacancy on the planning board. Um, did the appointments committee want to make a recommendation? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, I think you all have a copy of the letter somewhere it came in your packet. You know that we met. Uh, we interviewed a total of six applicants. We had six terrific applicants, um, which is a wonderful problem to have, to have to choose one of them. Um, I would also like to say that in addition to those excellent candidates, I'd like to encourage citizens on a regular basis to continue to apply to participate in our town boards and commissions. Um, at this point, I'd also like to specifically recommend that we appoint Jonathan Sarbeck to fill the planning board vacancy that runs through the, uh, for the term that runs through the end of this year. Thank you, Molly. Is there a second? Patty? And uh, any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Unopposed. Uh, group use request for Fort Williams Park. Michael, did you want to update us on this? Yes, uh, thank you. This is uh, a recommendation coming from the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. Uh, the Maine State Troopers uh, would like to use uh, the, the parade ground area on <coughs> September 10th of this year for a National Troopers Coalition picnic. They had another one of these three years ago. And this was the first picnic three years ago that, that took, uh, took place under a council policy allowing limited use of al alcohol. And they're, they're asking for the same request. The Fort Williams Committee is aware of that. There's now fees in place for that. And uh, that's the recommendation uh, from the committee that this be approved. Thank you, Michael. Is there a motion to accept? Jim? I move that we accept the application for consideration from the Maine State Troopers Association approved by a s vote of six zero by the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. Thank you. Jessica? I'll second. Thank you. Discussion? Michael, we have a sufficient um, insurance. Yeah, for... they'll, they'll, that's one of the conditions of approval is they provide insurance. Thank you. Anything else? No? All in favor? Seven zero. Okay, library employee parking at the former Cumberland Farms. Michael? Yeah, it, if anyone's been over the library lately, you can see we need a little more parking. And the, the hope is, is to get the library employees over in the former Cumberland Farm site. The, the real key language here is that there's two, really two points. It, it's three points. It's only for, this agreement is only for library employees who are trying to have a set group over there and try to leave this closest space for patrons. Two, the cost is for a dollar. And the, the other three I really want to underline is the agreement should be in a form acceptable to the town attorney. The current draft is not acceptable to the town attorney. He has some concerns with some of the liability language, so we still need to, to work that out. Uh, but I would uh, ask that you authorize me to sign agreement, uh, provided that uh, it's for no more than a dollar, and th that the agreement shall be in a form acceptable to the town attorney. Uh, the only other thing I did want to mention is there is a, within the agreement, that, you know, obviously there's a for sale sign on the property, and. The, the, the term of this would end if, if Cumberland Farms wished to end it. Uh, but, you know, it's, uh, it's nice that, you know, we'll be dealing with the corporate office. They're, they're willing to work with us. And 
you know, we, we but we do need the liability and other issues. We need in order to get our certificate of insurance and the the uh, uh, the town attorney signing off. Thank you. Is there a, mo oh, I had a question? Oh, you have a question. That's fine. Uh, just about the giant pile of sand that's Me in the too. parking lot right now. Um, is that through the contractor then, and not through the town? What was the question? The sand. Pile of sand. She wants to know oh, okay. Yeah, the, the pile of sand. Yeah, I, I can't hear in this ad tonight. Uh, the, the pile of sand was was a is a mis was a mystery to us, and sort of remains a mystery. Uh, <laughs> Gorham Sand and Gravel is a subcontractor to the construction manager, and they had asked permission to join. The, the contractor had asked permission to join in on this agreement, and I said no. And then 48 hours, seven hours later, actually, but they'd already said no. But the final time I said no, the, the dirt pile showed up seven hours later. And a, apparently, uh, Gorham Sand and Gravel got permission from the owner of the Cumberland Farms store across the street. Corporate Cumberland Farms, or, or, from, the, or from some of the manager, I'm not sure. Corporate Cumberland Farms is not aware of that permission. Uh, I'll leave it at that. So there's the mystery. But the the uh, let me say one more thing. Uh, you know, I, we've had some rather strong emails going back and forth on this topic because I was I wasn't too pleased. Uh, but but nonetheless, you know, I, you know, unless unless there's no violent objection, you know, what what I'd like to do is to try to work with. Uh, through the chain of command of, of not, with, with uh, the construction manager to find out a way that we, we can do this safely for the library employees and, and enable the staging area to, to still remain in place. You know, and you know, I, I've written emails saying I don't like it in the center of town. I don't like the fact we said no and it suddenly appeared. And uh, it's been an interesting dialogue. Uh, but, not, but I want to emphasize this agreement only applies to library employees parking and we had, we, whatever else is going on there, the town is not a party to it. One more question? Yes. How many employees do we need to have parking over there on a daily basis? How many employees do we need to have parking over there on a daily basis? Uh, it's, the number is nine we're looking at. Nine. You, know, you get nine employees out of the library parking lot, it makes, mm -hmm. it makes a big difference. Molly? Yeah, I think that does make a big difference in the library parking lot. And given the size of that sand pile, is there room for nine employees uh, parking? Every day I look oh, at back. how much snow has melted. and yeah, uh, That's the issue, snow. You know, I, I agreed that if the council approved this, that I would do a walkthrough tomorrow with the construction manager. So, you know, I haven't made that judgment yet. Mm. Okay. So yeah, I, I think it can work out, but I, you know, yeah. You, you, It'll help. I shared some of the emails with the library building committee chair, so she, she's aware that... Uh, you had some concerns. We, there were some concerns that have been raised, yeah. So is there a motion? Jim? I recommend that we authorize the town manager to sign an agreement with Cumberland Farms to permit parking for library employees on the former Cumberland Farms site while construction is ongoing at the library. Thank you, Jim. Is there a second? Jessica? Yeah, next item. Thank you. Uh, any more discussion? Anybody want to talk about the, the pile of dirt? Yes? Well, just the, does the motion need to say that once the language is cleaned up by the town attorney and approved? I mean, I don't want to make a motion that we're signing this document if the town attorney doesn't want us signing this document. It does say it'll be in a form acceptable to the town attorney, right? Yeah. But I don't know if that was in his motion. No. Yeah. Oh, oh. I assume that was that part of the motion in a form. Deb says it's going to be in there. Okay. Good. Yeah, I won't sign the agreement unless I get a sign off from the town attorney. Okay. I amend my amendment to include That's the good. cost of the space would be one dollar, and the agreement shall be in the form acceptable to the town attorney. Jessica, do I you second that amendment yep. to the amendment? Thank you. Anybody else? No. All in favor. Great, thank you. <coughs> um, next item, utility pole location permit. Um, you wanted to speak about this? Okay, sure, come on up. 
We'll give you your three minutes. You, you waited this long. We'll give you your three minutes. Oh, my name is Deborah Murphy. I live at 24 Pilot Point Road, but I'm actually on this issue representing Fairpoint Communications. I'm their right of way manager. And um, due to concerns of citizens and um, property owners near this location, we're pulling this permit for now. Okay. And trying to come up with a, a solution that better serves everybody. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we will remove this from the agenda with the permission of everyone. Yes? Mm -hmm. What are we doing? Is that all right with? Just pulled it. She just pulled the request. You were going to re remove it anyway. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. There we go. Thank you. Um, Family Fun Day Fireworks, item 56, 2015. Um, the Family Fun Day Committee is asking for permission to fundraise approximately five to 7000 to have fireworks in conjunction with Family Fun Day. And the council policy requires any such fundraising to be approved by the town council. So this is about the fundraising. Um, so um, is there a motion to accept? I'm sorry, Gene. Uh, My I'll head's make, going back and forth. I'll make a motion to authorize the Family Fund Day Committee to fundraise for fireworks. Thank you. Is there a second? Thank you. Caitlin? Discussion? Questions? Yes? No? Uh, Jessica? Yeah, I was just going to ask uh, when do, do, does Family Fund Day usually have fireworks? And I know that they are illegal in Cape Elizabeth. So this would be a special exception, I understand. Um, I think Michael can. <laughs> I didn't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't hear myself. Speak up. I'm one of the audiologists from our. I may be right behind you. I don't know. She wants to know about um, fireworks. Um, is this an exception to um, fireworks in Cape Elizabeth? It's going to look great right on TV. I don't know. Uh, fireworks for municipal firework shows permitted are legal in Cape Elizabeth, it's specifically in the ordinance. What you, uh, what's not legal is consumer, consumer fireworks, and, as those are defined by the main legislature. Approved firework shows are, are permissible. Thank you. Oh, I was just going to say I'm excited to have the fireworks back. They have been at the Family Fun Day my entire childhood, um, but the gentleman that always performed them, I believe, passed away and was kind of dwindled putting the fireworks show on after that. So it will be fun to bring that back. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? No? All in favor? Okay. Uh, all right, then um, I guess that is it, except for to adjourn to um, our, um, our workshop agenda. Yes, you adjourn first. Yes. Yep, so is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? A second. Thank you. Any discussion? Do we have to have citizens opportunity items right on the oh. agenda? Did you want to speak about something else or were you packing up? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Then we have nobody to speak about um, from citizens, so we heard from them earlier. So all in favor of adjournment? Thank you, and we will go into workshops.